so this is a quick tip. Uh, in an ongoing conversation on the Rhino forum, I'll post a link to the thread below in the description, um, just about making a blend between these two surfaces. And there's there's a lot of different solutions that have been proposed. A lot of them are great. There's just there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat. But I thought I would post a really really simple, direct, easy way. Um, and the idea is that we're going to make a blend between this edge and some trim on this surface, right? And of course, this is symmetrical, and it's aligned on a symmetrical axis, so we only need to do one of them, right? And so what I would do is I'm going to split this edge, and I've already I've rotated about the central axis of this, the rotation axis of this volume here. I've rotated this to exactly where I want this to stop, just so that my, I have a surface edge there. Um, and I'm going to break this edge here using my edge split. Okay. Yep, this one right here. And then I like, instead of using surfaces to make trims, I like using blend curve. And I'll show you some cool, cool blend curve tricks for making trimmed corners here, or trimmed edges, right? So I'm just going to blend these two edges to tangency. There we go. Flip in two. Cool. And so this, this is going to be my trim. And I can move this however I want, right? I have a lot of freedom. I can set different, different continuity. I can move these points around. But for the sake of this, I'm going to keep it super simple. And I'm just going to do tangent, tangent, and use this as my trim surface my trim object, right? Here's where it gets kind of cool. I'm going to run change degree. I'm going to bump this up to degree five because sometimes you can get away with a really cool trick. I'm going to say, so I want to, um, and now, so I, I've just changed this from degree three. Let me turn the points on to degree five. Um, I'm going to split this here. And so remember, there's there's no there's no guarantee whatsoever that this that this curve is on my surface. It's just I'm just going for shape, right? And so the way that you can pull this or you know stick it onto your surface is using pull. And so I can pull this curve onto this surface, and I can exercise this loose option. And so what loose says is. Don't change the degree and point count. Keep them the same. Do your best to fit it with, with what you have, right? So if you say loose no, it's going to do it with intolerance. Here, let's, let's go through it. Let's go, let's say loose no, and let's turn the points on, right? And so we have all these points, right? You've, we went from six points to all these. This is less smooth. So here's one of my favorite things is, so I say pull, I say loose, yes, okay. I put it onto here. You can see it's still, uh, it's still the same degree and point count. I then go back and I rematch the ends to my original blend inputs, my blend curve inputs. So I'm gonna do an extension of this surface line right here. And I'm going to say match, not match surface, but just match. And I'm going to match this curve to this one by tangency. And I'm going to match this one to this one also by tangency. Now, let's see if we get lucky. Split this with this. Ah, right? <laughs> And then this is where it can get even better. If you can get away with this, right? If you can get your loose pulled blend curve within tolerance to act as your split object, here's a bit of magic you can do. You can use loft now. And you can say loft from here to here. And you're using the curve, not your edge, as your input here. Straight sections. Do not simplify. This is degree one across here. We want to set it to, we want to get somewhere around curvature on both these edges. So we need this to be degree five. Change degree, five. Leave the other one five. Match surf. This one to this one. And we say curvature 
not by closest points, match target isocurve direction. And then we go to this side and we say this edge to the surface edge now, match by closest points, preserve isocurve direction. Awesome. So I can ditch this curve now. Nope, huh, not that surface. Oh, right, that curve has its points turned on. Do this, do this, right. We can see uh, with our zebra, oh, no, not Z, E, enter. We can see with our zebra that there's a bit of a break here, right? So if we want to shine this up even more, we can change degree again and we can bump it up a little bit. And I think it's five by six now. Yep, that's what we want. So we've added more control points. We, it's still single span, but we've bumped the degree up along this edge and, and you know this edge we're already fine with, but we've bumped it up along this edge here and we can run match surf again. And I'm just gonna say tangency. Match by closest points, preserve isocurve direction. Let's, F11, let's run zebra again, right? And so we can already see that this is much better, right? We've got a nice flow through here. From here, it's all just sort of point editing, sculpting, making fine tweaks. Like I'm gonna use my VSR control point modeling. Um, you can use move UVN to do the same thing. You know, when I look at this, like I don't love how this flows through here, right? So I look at this and I think like, I think this could be improved if I sort of start moving this a little bit, right? Maybe like this, maybe like this. And it's just a little more, just the flow of these verts start to make a little more sense, right? Awesome. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna polish this all the way up. This is just this is for demonstration, right? But so you move that and then you want to do match surf again. Oh, please, there we go. Into the command. Come on. Oh, see, this is this is the good sign is when you have trouble finding your surface edges when your edges are turned off. So again, match by closest points, preserve isocurve direction, tangency, right? There you go. I'm going to uh, for the sake of curiosity, see what VSR says these are now. Yeah, these are great, right? So, un so my my positional only edge zero is underneath tolerance, right? My G one is 0 0.07 degrees on on the same one. Uh, I, I think that's totally acceptable, uh, and all of these would spec out as as either G2 or very close to G2, right? So everything from here is just like, if you want to massage it a little, um, you know, obviously we can, we can mirror this three point, you know, we probably need to play around a bit with this edge here. If we look at curvature graph, right? This is a nice way of looking at this. pretty darn good. Um, but, you know, so basically from here, it's just, it's massaging, it's fine tuning. But the overall idea, the important stuff is um, using, using that curve blend and then pulling loose. If you can, anytime that you can get away with that, it's great. Because what it means is that you can also use that, that nice smooth single span curve that you wanted as your basis for building this, right? And I use this trick all the time too, where instead of using blend, I use loft. I do a straight loft without simplifying, and then I bump the degree up, and then I match it. And then it's point editing, sculpting from there. Cool. Hope you enjoy that.